Hey, welcome to another British Lit Lecture. Today we're talking about Everyman. Everyman is a form of medieval drama known as a morality play. As the term suggests, plots and morality plays convey a religious point. The details of the plot in a morality play, the conflict between the protagonist and the antagonist, and the resolution of that conflict are all designed to convey a moral point. Since England was Catholic during the Anglo-Norman Middle Ages, the messages of morality plays conformed to the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. The characters in morality plays are introduced to make the play's central moral point. Individual differences, fine shades of personality, are less important than the ways that the characters contribute to the play's moral message. A literary term for such a plot is an allegory and the characters in such plots are known as allegorical characters. By examining the characters and plot of every man, it's possible to see how the details of this play conform to the characteristics of medieval morality plays. Like Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, every man is a framework narrative. The play's frame, that is its opening and closing sections, direct the audience's attention to the play's central concern, the salvation of every human soul and what each person must do in order to escape damnation. In the opening section, speeches by the messenger, God, and death underscore the play's moral message. In the middle section of the play, we see the protagonist every man as he confronts his own death and begins his journey to salvation. Every man is proceeding blithely along the road of life, giving no thought to the fact that he must die. Every man is startled when he suddenly encounters death, who tells him that his life is at an end and he must soon face God's judgment. Characterized as God's messenger, death bears a strong resemblance to the role of a summoner in the medieval ecclesiastical courts, a character to whom we were introduced in Chaucer's general prologue. Terrified by the prospect of imminent death, every man begs to be allowed to take companions with him on this sad pilgrimage. When death agrees, every man first chooses false friends, fellowship, kindred, and cousin who abandon him as soon as they learn that his pilgrimage is a one-way journey into the grave. Abandoned by these disloyal companions, every man calls upon his good deeds. Good deeds is willing to join every man, but he is too weak to walk and advises every man to see if knowledge can help them. When every man calls on knowledge, this character advises him to go make his confession in accordance to prescribed Catholic ritual. Strengthened by every man's encounter with confession, Good Deeds advises every man to call on his personal qualities, beauty, strength, discretion, and five wits. Although this group of true friends accompany every man to the edge of the grave, only Good Deeds actually enters the grave with him. In the final scene, speeches by knowledge, the angel, and the doctor reveal that every man has achieved salvation and that his actions should serve as an example to the audience. While the plot and characters of every man are not as realistic and fully developed as in the Canterbury Tales, the play represents a significant development in the history of English drama. Chaucer's tales and prologue were read, usually aloud, to a group of auditors, while every man was performed by actual actors and observed by an audience whose attendance at the play were encouraged by the church. Although church doctrine may have suppressed some of the dramatic potential of the play, the support of the church was responsible for introducing English drama to a widespread popular audience. Music